you're over there, looking over here. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get it right. by the way. We were extra, extra. Um, but the long story is, is a lot deeper. The long story is how close a group of people can get in such a short amount of time when you're serving as brothers and, Christ brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some of the attractions that we did um, before we got to our site. And we went to go see the CN Tower, which we found out had 147 floors. And we were able to go all the way to the top. And then we went on this um, glass floor that you could see the entire bottom city of Toronto, which is very scary. I don't think Abby went on it, though. <laughs> but us, us girls did. Um, and then what else did we do? Oh, we went to Canada's Wonderland. That was about, I'd say about two times the size of Valley Fair. And it was big and it was a very hot day. So we, we watched some acrobats in the water and we were able just to walk around and go on many long, scary roller coasters. Um, and Niagara Falls, that was very beautiful. We were able to see it at night. And then the following morning we, were, we stopped for about I'd say an hour to see it, but at night we were able to see it, the different colors change, and it was very beautiful. On Sunday, so we left on Thursday morning, and on Sunday we got to the actual site that we were staying at. We stayed at Emmanuel Church of the Nazarene um, in Toronto, and YouthWorks is kind of camped out of there for their 
where we stayed and slept and ate for the most part. But the YouthWorks um, partners with a lot of different organizations in the Toronto area. We worked with two. The first day on Monday, we went to this program called Refresh that's out of the church, where they went to low-income government housing and asked if these folks, homeowners or renters, wanted their places painted and that we would, they would do it for free and provide the paint as well. And if the homeowners wanted to provide their own paint, they sure could. Um, and we would paint whatever colors they wanted. And so we, we went to uh, one, and in return, they needed to make us lunch, which was awesome. Um, because, well, okay, I'll, you'll understand why lunch was super cool. It's not just like a regular, anyway. So we painted with Adrian was the homeowner's name. She wanted one bedroom blue, like blue, and another bedroom um, purple, a lavender, and then like a really dark grape. She wanted life and color in her life. She has never painted before, never bought paint before, had no idea what paint, what she needed or anything. And multiple times, like, I, I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> like, you can't do it wrong. So it was a lot of fun, and she made us Hungarian food. Um, Adrienne is from Hungary. She moved to Canada or immigrated to Canada eight years ago with her 10-year-old son. Um, well, he's 10 now. He was two then. And she made this beautiful, wonderful lunch, and we really got to know her and her background and a little bit about why she left Hungary and why Canada's a better place for her. Um, the other place that we worked at that was kind of our favorite for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday was a place called St. Francis Table. And it was led by uh, St. Francis of Assisi, I think. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful organization. It's a, soup kitchen, but it served restaurant style. So patrons come, um, are served from noon until one, and then five until six for lunch and dinner separate. Uh, they pay a dollar for their meal, they get a food ticket, and they are waited on like any other restaurant. Um, it goes a long way to preserve the dignity and just the self-pride that these patrons have that otherwise um, are going to not eat that day. Um, so it's a pretty amazing process. A very well-oiled machine. Every day we peeled 25 pounds of potatoes, which was an experience in and of itself. But it was such a fun time waiting on the folks of Toronto and seeing the homelessness that's there. Um, to be told, Canada at large has about five times the homeless population that the United States does. And so we saw a lot of um, something that we're not accustomed to. It was a really cool opportunity for us to reach back out into the community. Some of the relationships that we were able to build were from different churches and states. We had um, a church from New Jersey, Maryland, and Virginia, and, that's, and, then and then us. Yeah, so we were able just to connect with one another. We were staying with um, our room was we were sharing the room with the Virginia girls. They came in very late, and we were already sleeping. And they woke us up, and the next day was a long day. <laughs> but it was it was fun getting able. To, it was just. Awesome, an awesome experience to be working as God's hands with different people from the states and just knowing that we all have the same passion to serve um, different communities in our own community. And um, like Abby touched on, Adrian, we built such a strong connection with her and relationship. She was just very open with everything, with her house, with her story. Um, she was just very welcoming, I would say. And then the soup kitchen, St. Francis, we... Dominic, he was in some of these pictures, and Brother John, they were amazing people to work with. They were very funny. I didn't think that. I thought they were very they were serious, but they were very funny. Um, let's see, Dominic, he would crank up his rock and roll music very loud while we were peeling potatoes, so we had to yell across the kitchen <laughs> to do something. <laughs> Um, but otherwise, I think that we were all able to just build strong relationships with one another. I mean, and I, that really brought us close, and it was, and we were, actually, we were paired up, we were the Raptors with the Maryland group, so we were able to just, the car rides there were an hour just to get where our site was, and we'd stop at a Tim Hortons and just be able to bond and wait in line for 20 minutes, so it wasn't some, it was just something you, you'll never forget, and building relationships has really been amazing, and I'd say building a relationship with God was definitely a highlight, just serve, like I said, serving and through him and just working while helping others was honestly my favorite part of the whole trip. Yeah, kind of like what Becca said, um, and to end, the impact of the entire thing was pretty phenomenal. Um, there's a closeness that you get with people that is only there because of Christ. 
So spending four days nonstop with other folks, um, without Christ it would be a totally different experience, but because we were bonding with our brothers and sisters, we really got so close um, and so in touch that you know, six hours after you're not with them, you're texting them and saying, I miss you. So um, that part in itself was pretty amazing, but also the impact. Um, we went to a church in Toronto on Sunday morning that we just picked. It was downtown Toronto, kind of out of nowhere. We just went. And the message there um, that morning, the pastor spoke about Noah and how he asked for God's direction, listened to his call, and then built the ark. And it was awkward and uncomfortable and often and long and kind of awful. Um, and yet he did it and he was, you know, went through that. And so what are we, um, that we are called to do the same thing, that we're called to ask for God's direction, that we're called to listen. And what's our ark and are we going to build it? And most of the time God calls us to do uncomfortable things, right? He doesn't, you know, say, yeah, you just hang out at home and watch Netflix and I'll take care of it. Um, he asks us to go outside of our comfort zone and, and do weird stuff. And every single day and every single speaker that we ever heard talk or even just in our own conversations um, with the leaders and asking our stories, every single conversation was built around that. What are we asking? What are we hearing from God? And are we doing those things? Um, and so I think all of us took, a, took back or bringing back home that same kind of thing, that what's our ark and how can we build it? And we're keeping each other accountable to that as well. Um, the two boys in our group think that they're going to start a food truck driving around Baltimore, where they're from, um, offering meals for a dollar. But the rest of us have a little less intangible goals and trying to figure that out and support each other along the way. So thank you for supporting us along our way. Yeah. Wow. And great singing, too. It's nice to have a youth director who's got a drama background. That really helps. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Gideon's. Ed McGrath is going to come up. McGrath is going to come up and help us with the ministry of the Gideons. And, Ed, are you okay with this mic? All right. Good morning. Good morning. That's uh, incredible. Uh, I love what Abby says there is uh, stepping out of your safe zone. <clears throat> Just incredible. To step beyond what you can do. Uh, I'd like to speak about the Gideons this morning. I have here something that uh, steps out beyond our understanding. A little piece of corn. Corn seed. And what do we typically do with the corn seed? We throw it in the dirt, plant it, and what comes up? My question this morning is, what causes this seed, once it's in the dirt, to decide it's going to germinate? What is the mechanism? The, the mechanism that it says, okay, it's time to start growing. Same thing with, uh, with uh, it can sit on the shelf for years and years, sit in the bag for years and years, but when it gets in the right environment, it simply germinates. Same concept, the uh, Gideons, that's what we do. We plant seeds. These little Bibles, we plant them in the hands of fifth graders. We plant them at military bases. We plant them, the regular Bibles, New Testament, in the hospital rooms. We uh, even do city blitzes, kind of like going to Canada. They say we just hand out Bibles on the street as fast as we can. Go to universities, hand them out to students. Uh, and as you know from the Gideons, we simply put them in the hotel rooms. It's a kind of a, a, a way of just planting seeds. And what's really cool, we have no idea how these things germinate. Example, after church one time, I, a lady came up to me and she says, she says, you know, when I was a teenager, I was getting uh, bullied, and I went to my room, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to end it all. She's looking around her room, looking for a way to end it all. What do you think she came across? That seed was planted in her room when she was in fifth grade. She brought it home. Today, she's in the areas that we speak in. And she's a school teacher. Her husband was there after church, two kids. Incredible. I have no idea 
how this thing germinated. We just pass them on. In uh, Mark chapter 4, we see that too. I can sleep and I can get up after planting seeds. The seed sprouts and I have no way of controlling it. You do the same thing as a farmer, right? <laughs> Just whether you sleep or get up, you can't make the corn sprout. Same thing with God's word. And uh, one more step with the DNA inside of the corn, the DNA inside here, you just can't mess with it. We can't, we still can't even make a synthetic seed. We can modify it genetically, but we dare not modify it too far. Same thing with this, we can't modify it. It just multiplies. Matter of fact, only God given, only God created things multiply. You ever notice that? We can't, uh, you can't have a car recreate itself. Only God made things that can multiply. We distributed over 84 million of these copies all over the world. Your donation, we don't take it in. We pay our own dues for the Gideons. But your donations today, if you uh, would like to, uh, would be to uh, print these scripture verses. That's the funds that we raise. We contribute as well as Gideons, but we pay all of our admin administrative expenses. We, uh, we'd like to invite you to help us with the printing costs of all the Bibles that go everywhere in the world. One of the favorite ministries that I have is the uh, jail ministry. Every Thursday, two Gideons go into the Meeker County Jail. I love it. Also, uh, the, uh, I also go to the McLeod County Jail in Blanco, just because I love being there. Uh, we go there, we preach the gospel. We read scripture on Saturday mornings. We study scripture on Saturday mornings. We have a prayer time Saturday mornings in uh, Litchfield. And then we take that word into the jail and share it. And it's incredible how people are receiving the seed and how their eyes light up after having ended up in a situation that they don't want to be in. So I appreciate the, op the opportunity to speak about the Gideons and, uh, and to hear about the other mission projects going on in other parts of the world. Just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Ed.